Welcome, foxes, rabbits, birds, frogs, and all you monkeys out there. It's time for the finale of my Star Fox City 4 LP. Q Walker Jump Cut in 3, 2, 1. You destroy the satellite, we can go straight for Venom. Be careful, Fox. I'm on it. Yeah, sorry about that. A few seconds got cut out because of my hog pog. I'm still learning how to use it. Okay, guys, destroy all barriers. Aim for the thick energy tower. Welcome to Bulse, everybody. Bulse is unique in that it is both a level and a boss. There's no boss at the end. This entire thing is one massive machine we have to take out in order to make it to Venom. At least from this side anyway, I'll explain that later. All you have to do is take out these six energy towers that are generating not only a shield around the reactor of the entire thing, but all of the fighters that are spewing out have their own shields, so you can't hurt them until you take this, th these towers out. Once you do though, the real fight begins. Ah man, yet yeah, another cool memorable moment that just makes this game so good. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool scene. It's, it's like something out of a movie. All the fighters and Falco's little lion and Venom just dominating the background. Suddenly seems like a huge shadow has been cast over everything and the odds just suddenly... Wait, where's the music? Playtime is over, Star Fox. I think I'll talk to you Jesus, I'm Pigma. That's probably the darkest light in the entire Star Fox series. Okay, so oh, looks like I already took down Leon. That was easy. Yeah, thank goodness I have the hyper laser. Okay, so if I beat these guys in Facina before coming here, they won't be here. If I beat a couple of them in Facina, the remaining members will meet you here. And if you completely skip Facina, you'll have to face Star Wolf here. So, that's how this whole system works, so it's one of three possible encounters you can have, though in any given run you'll only ever encounter Star Wolf twice at most. But I guess I'm already kind of spoiling something about the levels to come. So the final three levels are kind of interesting. They're treated sort of like one big level. Like, after you beat this or Area 6, you jump straight to Venom. You don't come back to the map, you don't see any of the other planets, it just jumps you right into it. So, oh jeez, my teammates aren't doing so well. Even the ones I've already saved. Oh, here's one thing I absolutely love. Depending on how the fight goes, like, if your team starts dominating Star Wolf, like if you outnumber Star Wolf, sometimes your friends will make it behind Star Wolf and start dogging them the way they would dog you on Facina, you know, and other fights. So that's good, seeing your friends take the initiative and get the upper hand. After a certain point, the core of the of the of the, the satellite, the, the reactor, will stick out, you know, and it's covered with weak spots. But the more of these weak spots you take out, suddenly beams start shooting out of all the exposed spots. So it gets to a point where there's just laser beams firing every which way, and it gets to be really chaotic, and it's really hard not to get damaged by at least one of them. Okay, now I want to explain something about Star Wolf. If one of your friends is taken down by a member of Star Wolf, they will start going after you. And if all three of your friends get taken out, it can get to a point where you're just surrounded by Star Wolf members, where they're all tailing you at once and y you basically don't stand a chance. So that's a reason to keep an eye out for your friends and jeez, I'm Peppy's a dead bunny walking. Okay, you see right there, lasers coming out of one of the weak spots that I've already taken out. I would have taken this whole thing out by now if I didn't have to keep looking after my friends because they keep getting tailed every few seconds even though I've already like killed all the members of Star Wolf. Well, not really killed. Actually, I think in this, like, scenario... Okay, how do I say it? There's, like, two ways this game can end. Bulls and approaching Venom from this angle, from this side, is basically non-canon. I, I think that, like, in other Star Wolf battles, they always manage to crawl away from the wreckage of their crashed fighters and lick their wounds to come back and fight another day. But look at this, we're in space. There's nowhere for them to go. So if you beat Star Wolf here, I think they most definitely are dead, and this entire scenario is basically non-canon. It's like the game expects you to go through Area 6 and face the real final boss, because there's like two versions of it, but I'll get into that later. So how am I editing these three stages together, since they're basically incompatible? Well, I decided to show both first, and then I'd cut to Area 6, 
and then I show the two sides of Venom. Because if you approach Venom after defeating Bulls, after destroying this whole thing, which, geez, why haven't I beaten it by now? You'll have to go through this long, basically a trench run all the way to Andros's, the, en the, sure, the entrance to his lair. If you go through Area 6, that basically replaces Venom as the final stage, and you just jump straight to the entrance to his lair. But there's another thread that you'll, you'll see there. And I beat it. And I barely got any points for it because I took so frigging long. Usually it would have only taken me like, what, a fourth as long? But, you know, having Star Wolf to contend with and then all the other fighters is just, yeah. That's another cool shot, just seeing all the splintered wreckage of the satellite everywhere. Venom, here we come. And now we're jumping to Area 6 on the, the upper path. You know how it started with Corneria, then split into two, then three paths? This basically joins into two paths and then one final stage. This level, by the way, is awesome. It's almost over. We're in your debt. Come back in one piece, Fox. Will do, General. Good luck. Came in here. No problem. Do you copy? Emergency maneuvers! Too late. Game over, pal. Welcome everyone to Area 6, one of the most intense harassing scenes, uh, uh, stages in the whole game. Jeez, it's so much like some other movie that I, I have some mildly called it a scene. Ugh, whatever. These bombs count as enemies, so blowing up as many of them as you can is, uh, with a couple of bombs is a good way to get those hits to go up. Uh, there are so many things I love about this, this stage. There are so many enemies. The scale is so huge that the, the pacing is amazing. There's like never a dull second in this whole stage. I love how Venom is getting closer, like, the further you go in. And one of my favorite things, which you'll see in a little bit, is that the, the, the commanders of this fleet, they talk back and forth, and you see them start to, to panic as you get closer and closer to the planet. Like, they've broken through the next line! Oh my gosh, they're getting so close! What are we gonna do? This <laughs> is so great. These satellites take so much longer to take down if you don't have the hyperlaser. So it's a good thing I can repair it, because, oh boy, I'm gonna get so many hits. Yes, but I know, I know, my whole playstyle is very reckless, very, like, very down to the wire, but it pays off. Here's another thing I love about this stage. You can call upon Rob to assist you in parts like this. He'll take down ships like that with those huge yellow lasers. That is so cool. I would like to see that sort of thing happen more often in, in Star Fox games, to have the Great Fox follow and assist you. But, oh well, it, it's, it's nice that we, we get to... Like, I mean, they saved it for a huge scene like this, so I guess it's not so bad. Anyway, this part is pretty tricky. You have to take down all five of these missiles. If any of them reach you, they will damage you and your entire team. You'll like hear a slippy screaming. I usually take them out with a bomb, but you can see I ran out of them, so I'm pretty lucky I managed to snipe them all with the laser so early. It helps if you break at that part. And by the way, don't worry, a few of these can hit Peppy and he'll be alright. Just make sure he isn't constantly dogged by them, or, you know, you'll lose him. Anyway. Oh man, the music. Everything about this stage is, is like, perfect. I don't even really know what else to say, just, just watch. Oh, and yes, Andros will start talking to you. He's found a way to tap into the Great Fox's frequency, and he's using it himself to taunt you. Is there anything else that could make me love this stage? Just make sure you keep your friends in one piece, because they're going to need every scrap of spare health they can get for the challenges to come, because yes, it is going to get even more rough after this stage. So, yeah, just to be clear, if you fail to protect the Great Fox in Sector Z, or take out the, the enemy base on Macbeth, you won't be able to access this stage. Those are your only two chances, so just don't mess up. But, you know, I think it's pretty fair. They're, they're pretty simple, easy-to-do objectives. Even so, like, you have to earn the right to play in the, the stage this glorious, and it is worth it. This stage is just so dang fun. And, yes, I know, I know, my whole playstyle is very reckless, but I get results, damn it. I get those hits. Hey, like, that's the entire point of games like this. Yes, we are. 
So I haven't talked that much about the whole route system since uh, like, I'm sure people haven't really had to think about it much since I've been going through all the stages as if there was no like extra routes. Um, a lot of people's favorite route to go through is Corneria, Meteo, Facina, where you fight Star Wars the first time. Uh, Aqu uh, no, no, not Aquas. Uh, Solar, Macbeth, and then this, and then Venom. That's one of my favorite routes. I tend to alternate between that and another route. That would be Corneria, Sector Y, Aquas, Zonus, Macbeth, and then this stage. Th that route, I think, gives you the most opportunities to get super high points. Like, look at this. I'm already above 300. I'm not sure there's even any way to make it rise that high in any other stage. Well, probably Zonus. Anyway, we're almost done. They're really pulling out the big guns for these parts. A good charge shot against the, the broad sides of these Star Destroyers will take out most of their cannons, and then you just destroy the bridges to take out the entire thing. You bet your ass we are. One's different. Crush! We were so close to Venom! Behold, Gorgon. This is one of the toughest bosses in the game, mainly because of its tentacles. Like, it takes a while to take it out. Once you reveal the weak spot, if your lasers are powerful enough, or you have a couple of spare bombs, you can take it out in like one go. But getting to that point, it has a lot of hurdles, shall we say. The tentacles are super strong. It'll like fling them at you, it'll basically try to swat you like a fly. And every time I have been hit by one of those, it clipped my wing instantly. Usually, your wings can take a, a few hits before you lose them. But every time I get hit by that, no matter how, even if I've managed not to get hit by anything else throughout the entire stage, those tentacles are deadly and they will knock you down to like the regular laser and it will make this fight that much harder and longer. So just you know, take out the three energy balls uh, as quickly as you can, or it'll close up and you'll, it'll, like, you'll have to take out the other ones later. And take out the tentacles as soon as they're vulnerable. Like when they're flashing purple, uh, good. This boss can seem pretty repetitive, but as it keeps ramping things up, you'll know you're getting somewhere. No, uh, wait, no, don't. No, don't you? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I, I don't know why I'm trying to put on this act as if I'm seeing this all for the first time and this enthusiasm is real. Whatever. I think I just have to take them out one more time and that'll be it. I think the weak spot fla is like blue at first and then yellow and then red and then it's completely exposed. Just. Rail on it! Don't let up for a second! And there you go. If it is time to close up and you have to like wait to shoot it again, you only get like five points and then three points. But if you manage to take it out right then in that one go, you get ten points. And that's it, that's Gorgon. That was like their last defense. The last thing keeping us from Venom. This opening shot is flawless, I think. Normally I would have a bomb to spare for this part, but I suddenly realized that I'd used them all up on both so I'm like, oh no! Now I'm only gonna take out a tiny fraction of these guys. I'm missing so many hits! <laughs> Seriously though, look at all these enemies, look at all these bullets everywhere. It's practically a, a, a bullet hell game, almost. Yeah, the Star Fox is never going to be quite that hard. You have a lot of health for one thing. Anyway, I'm jumping back and forth a little bit here because you don't come here after passing through Area 6. You only come to this area after destroying Bulls. Like, like I said, after you beat Area 6, you skip straight ahead to the entrance to Andros' lair. But I wanted to show everything, you know, I wanted to show, like, both of the sides of Venom. Uh, actually, I'm not going to show quite everything. There's a few, like, multiple paths through this stage. But I'm just gonna show, like, my favorite one. Or one of my favorites. I honestly don't remember all of these. 
I don't come to this stage that often. Probably because I don't like the final boss. How do I say it? The final boss is the same both ways to a point. But if you go along the bottom path, if you go through both and then through here, the final phase of the boss will just be a decoy. It'll basically be like a, like a jack-in-the-box, that kind of thing. Really corny. I'm not going to show footage of that. I just wanted to skip away ahead to the, the real boss. Um, but you get the idea. Anyway, this stage is pretty darn fun. It's like, even if you don't get to Area 6, oh well, this stage is pr still pretty exciting in its own right. I kind of wish that, there w that you could go through both stages, because it would feel like two acts of a much bigger thing. You know, kind of like on some games, like Sonic games, you'll have one stage where the first half of it is completely different than the second half. Or it, it would feel like, I don't know, like two scenes in a movie that are back to back. I just think it would be so exciting to like, be able to go through both of them, but like I said earlier, Area 6 kind of replaces this stage. There are tons of enemies and lots of hazards like this. I don't really know what's happening here. I used to think that they were fingers of some giant creature Andros created. But no, that the planet's crust is apparently so unstable that it's constantly shifting and changing like that. Or who knows, maybe Andros is able to control it somehow, I don't know. Now here's one thing I love about the teammate system. If all of your teammates are still alive at this point, their combined firepower will take out that beam, giving you a clear path through those, those spinning beams. And that, there's a lot of other instances like that where your friends can take out certain enemies and shift the tide of the battle just a teensy bit. And that was probably the best example back there of the teammate system at work. That's why I love it, and I, I'm kind of disappointed that they've never really made it as involving as it was in this game. Anyway, we got one more boss before we take down Andros. This is the Golem Mech. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a robot that's dressed up to look like a golem. Uh, just chip off all the pieces of armor and uh, just shoot its head and then the weak spot on its back and that's it. It's a pretty simple boss. I think it's pretty exciting, especially from the cockpit view as you see the whole place shaking around. I usually like to take off his, uh, his uh, you know, butt last because it kind of looks like he's wearing a giant diaper like he's a sumo wrestler or something. That's just my silly, immature, autistic mind at work. I don't know. It's a pretty self-explanatory fight. Just try not to hit the beams. Like, sometimes cockpit view is a little more helpful than the, the, the normal view and vice versa. So just keep alternating between if you're like experienced enough with both views. And uh, just keep shooting whenever you can, but make sure that you don't clip your wings. Because in this version of the stage, Andros is right after this thing. And you're gonna need all the firepower you can get. I mean, Andros himself isn't that hard. But the battle can easily go downhill if you don't come prepared and if you give him like just a second too many and it gets the upper hand. Like I know I'm really building up this boss, but it's pretty cool. And that's it. But it's so crazy to think that like James McLeod, Fox's father, probably went through these exact same places years ago, and then this is where he died. And now we're cutting to where we would be if we had come here right after Area 6. Don't get too cocky, Star Fox. Let's see how you handle our new ships. Too bad Dad's not here to see you fail. We'll make sure you never begin drugs. Yes, yeah, Star Wolf is back again, and they're much, much harder this time. If you don't have a powered-up laser, or your friends are at low health at the start, I don't know what to tell you. This fight is going to be so hard. Uh, Star Wolf, they, they, their fighters perform pretty much the same as they did before, but I think they're a little faster. They, they, their firepower has increased drastically. It's almost like they have hyper lasers now. And they can barrel roll. They can spin around and make a little sh bubble-shaped shield around themselves, and that'll... They usually do it when you try to hit them with a charge shot. You gotta hit them directly. You can't cheese them with charge shots. That's not gonna work. Like, they, they, they'll be prepared for that. Now, I know some people may think this fight is a little too hard, a little unfair, but there's a few indicators that I always use to, like, know whether I'm about to be dogged by Star Wolf or not. Like, of course, there's the map. You can look at the map and just see if there's a black icon swooping in behind you. But even if you don't have time to look down at the map, just listen for the hum of the, the, the Wolfen's engines. The Wolfen's have these really loud, like, jet engines that make them sound like they may be even more powerful than the R-Wings. And when you hear that, 
And then, like, if you hear laser fire, like, a second later, that's when you know that someone is right behind you. So just keep an ear open, keep an ear out for them, and you should be fine. Just, you know, make sure you do somersaults, you know, plenty of those. You know, like, when there's only one member of Star Wolf left, they'll usually give you the toughest time. Like, that's when they'll constantly be doing somersaults. That's why I kind of advise you to take Wolf out first. Because if he's the last one, he's going to be somersaulting more than he normally would. And it can make this part of the fight take a lot longer. I'm about to take him down just like that. Because I'm just that dang... You know, I'm actually not that awesome. I don't want to do anything, whatever. I'm okay. I'm competent. <laughs> this fight's almost over. No way! I don't believe it! And no, they're still not dead. They'll walk away from this one, too. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, Star Fox. Know that I the galaxy. This is a good place to get powers, but I'm not exactly... I don't know where they all are. Now you will feel These hallowed halls. This is where James experienced his final moments. This is it, folks. This is Andros. He's performed probably numerous experiments on himself that brought him to this state. He used to be just a normal little four-foot furry dude like Fox and Pepper and all the rest, but he turned himself into this thing, just a disembodied head that's somehow keeping itself alive. There's probably a little bit of magic involved. I don't know. It's like we're in his realm. Now this is like, All you have to do is take out his hands, then take out his head. And he has this one really scary attack where he tries to suck you into his mouth and chew you up. If you're persistent enough, you just might be able to barrel roll out of his way, but if you have a bomb, just shoot the bomb into his mouth and that'll that'll make him stop. But of course I have the blue laser, so I can just cheese my way through the final seconds of this phase. Well that was easy. Only I have the brains to rule my life. So, Andron, you show your true form. As corny as this boss is, I do like the idea that Andros is just so far gone that his true form is this giant brain with eyeballs that he can get control with electric beams. So just keep an eye on the little white dots on the map and try to get behind them. They will follow you around like any member of Star Wolf would. But it's really easy to send them off course because they can only turn around so fast and they're like constantly orbiting around the main brain. And the brain itself will stay away from you until the eyeballs are taken out. At that point, it'll try to grab you with the little tentacles drooping off the bottom of it. And uh, just keep like going counterclockwise to its parent if that makes sense. Shoot at the little, uh, shoot at the back of it, the cerebellum, whatever it's called. Don't get sucked into the tentacles or you'll lose a wing and take a ton of damage. And that's it. Pretty simple fight. Not nearly as hard as some make it out to be. Don't ever give up, my son. Father? Follow me, Fox. I once made a little video using someone else's footage of this bit, and I, I took Pierce the Heavens with your drill from the Gurren Lagan soundtrack, and it made this extremely emotional. This little scene where Fox is following his dad's ghost out of Andros's lair. It's like James has been waiting all these years for his little boy to grow up and follow him here and take out what he wasn't able to. I just think this is so awesome.
It's like, is James really there? Is Fox just imagining things while he's on death's door? Who knows? So if you fall, if you don't follow James, if you veer off course in one of these other paths, you will die. You will fly right into an inferno. James knows the way out. Also, I like that he says, trust your instincts, because Peppy says the same thing, so that must have been something that James told him a lot. Continuity. You've become so strong, Fox. sends the story of how a fox, a rabbit, a frog, a bird, a cat, a dog, and a robot save the galaxy from a giant evil monkey. I love this game! So yeah, after seeing this LP, I hope those of you who may not be that familiar with this game can see a little more of like why people love this game so much. I, I can't get enough of this game. The, the, the gameplay is so like simple and fun and straightforward. The characters are so endearing. The dialogue is, is never, it's never really rubbed me the wrong way. It's never really been annoying. Yeah, it's campy, but it's still endearing. Like there's something, I guess, earnest about it. I love the whole setup. I love the design of the R wings, the Great Fox, a ton of the, like most of the bosses. I like the the stages. As dated and ugly as some of the graphics are, I still like the themes of most of these levels. I like the the, the gimmicks. I like the the Landmaster. I like the Blue Marine. I love the soundtrack. I, I like pretty much everything about this game. And yeah, it's a pretty short game, but that's another reason I like coming back to it, is it's not that demanding. Like, that's something I hear a lot of people complain about. They say Star Fox Zero isn't worth it because it's so short. Like, I paid $60 for this game, I expected it to be like 100 hours long. Like, DSP's review, he complained that there were only that the, the, the stages were only like 10 to 20 minutes long. And like, excuse me? How long do you expect any given stage of Star Fox to be? They're typically over in like, two or three sometimes five minutes at most. Do you just expect there to be a ton of stages? Like how, geez, you don't want to overwork these guys. It's like, these kinds of games work best when they're over quickly. You know, we can just come back to them over and over and over again and try to do a little bit better each time. Oh, hold on. Hold that thought. In your debt, I would be honored to have you as part of the Cornerian. Oh no, sir. We prefer doing things our own way. Great Fox is ready to go. It's time for us to go now. Anyway, go going back to the whole subject of length in games, I have passed up so many games these last couple of generations, like Mass Effect and whatever, because they're just, they're too long for me. Some like Metroid Prime or like a Zelda game, that's about my limit. I, I like games that are relatively short and that I can just come back to and play over and over and over again. Like, I don't see why people are okay with playing a game that might be so bloated, so filled with padding, so tedious, that you're only ever going to play it like that one time, and then maybe revisit it some years down the road. 
Like, why even buy a game like that if it's only going to be fun the first couple of times and then you've basically seen everything, so why bother coming back to it? A game like this is made to be replayed over and over and over again, like that's the entire point of it. That's why I love games like this in Sonic Adventure 2, is because they're designed to keep you coming back to the stages dozens, maybe hundreds of times. That's why I'm drawn to more arcadey games, because you could play them over and over again, and they'll never get boring. They'll never stop being fun. You could always, like, do just a little bit better than you did last time. But these more modern games, these incredibly story-heavy games, they're just so, like, Okay, alright, I've seen it, now I can put it away for a while, I don't need to come back to it. And it's like, that's not worth the money to me. I want a game that I can play forever. A game that'll never stop being fun. That's where I think the true beauty and the true longevity of a game comes from. Is how long it keeps you playing after you've beaten the campaign. And how like many times you can come back to it and still always have fun with it. Learn to like appreciate new little things about it that you may not have as a kid. And I guess that's why this is one of my favorite games because no matter how many times I come back to it, it's always just as fun. It, it never like, its appeal has never diminished for me and probably never will no matter how dated it becomes. What can I say, I just, I love this game. And I don't mind like a new Star Fox game being kind of like this on this level because that's when it's at its best. Anyway, um, if you went to like the, the wrong pathway, you would see Andros's face here because he escapes while you deal with a decoy. But we get a beautiful sunset because I beat the right ending, and look at all those hits I got. I almost broke my record this time. Every other time I've played this recently, it's like I'd look at my old record from when I was a kid and think, how did I ever do that? How did I get 1,544 points? And yes, I named this file ass. So it's like, the last few times I've played this, I've always gone to like 1,200, like 1,300 at most. And I think, how the heck did I get the points to go that high? And then something just clicked this time when I played it. I don't know what happened. I apparently just did so well that I came this close. Just like a, a dozen enemies or so. From beating my old record from like, what, six years ago? And uh, I'd say this playthrough went pretty well. I love this track, by the way. That plays like during the menu. It's just so like... It's like, it's so sweet, it's so sentimental. It makes you think about like the pain Fox must feel for his father and stuff. Like, that whole final scene was, like, the perfect way to end this game. You know, him chasing his father, like, following his father out of the, the bowels of Andros's lair. Ah, oh, man, there's so many memorable moments in this game, so many things I love about it. I could gush about it forever. And there you go, we beat it. Well, I don't really have much else to say about this game. I like Star Fox Adventure a little bit, but again, it's one of those very padding, heavy games. So that's the kind that I only come back to every, what, five years or so, just to like jog my memory. And then there's some like Assault, which is a little more arcadey, a little more like this, even with the on-foot sections and stuff. So that's a game I like a fair bit. I don't mind coming back to that. Though I find it funny how now that game is suddenly getting so much love now that people are like, they're really miffed about Star Fox Zero. So they go back and think, well, Assault wasn't that bad, you guys. Well, that's what I've been saying for like 10 years, but only now it's valid? Oh, geez. And then, just just wait, another Star Fox game is going to come out, and then people are going to go, Oh, Star Fox Zero wasn't that bad, guys. I love Star Fox Zero, by the way, if you guys don't know by now. So anyway, thanks for joining me for this LP. I'm sorry if I rambled constantly. I'm sorry if my voice was annoying. I tried my best to put this together in as, as presentable and acceptable way as possible, and I just hope that you enjoyed coming along with me for the ride. So, see you guys next time with whatever else I decide to do in June. <coughs>